Of the Battle of the Wilderness, I can tell you little beyond what occurred in my own regiment. The character of the ground forbade a general view, even by officers highest in rank. The Texas Brigade broke camp at two o'clock in the morning of the 6th, and by double-quicking the last two miles, reached the scene of action at sunup. Filing to the right and marching a quarter of a mile down the plank road, it formed into line of battle and loaded. Then, advancing in a gradual right wheel, it was brought to front the enemy, whose lines stretched across the road. Our position was on an open hill immediately in rear of a battery. Within 300 yards were the Yankees, and but for the intervening timber, we would have been exposed to their fire. Here, General Lee, mounted on the same horse, a beautiful dapple gray, which carried him at Fredericksburg in 1862, rode up near us and gave his orders to General Gregg, adding, The Texas Brigade has always driven the enemy, and I expect them to do it today. Tell them, General, that I shall witness their conduct today. Galloping in front, General Gregg delivered the message. Forward, Texas Brigade. Just then, Lee rode in front of the 5th Texas, as if intending to lead the charge, but a shout went up, Lee to the rear, and a soldier sprang from the ranks and, seizing the dapple gray by the reins, led him and his rider to the rear. The Yankee sharpshooters soon discovered our approach, and some of our best men were killed and wounded before a chance was given them to fire a shot. At 300 yards, the leaden hail began to thin our ranks perceptibly. 400 yards, and we were confronted by a line of blue, which, however, fled before us without firing a single volley. Across the plank road stood another line, and against this we moved rapidly. The storm of battle became terrific. The Texas Brigade was alone. No support on our right, and not only none on our left, but a terrible, enfilading fire poured on us from that direction. Crossing the road, we pressed forward 200 yards farther, when, learning that a column of Federals was double-quicking from the left and would soon have us surrounded, General Gregg gave the order to fall back. General Lee's object was gained, his trust in the Texans justified, for the ground from which two divisions had been driven was recaptured by one small brigade of whose men more than half were killed and wounded.